Okay, I thought what we do now is we break away a little bit from our uh, conversation with mom on a personal basis and go over some photos that she brought with her from Minneapolis down here. And we're going to try to do this in a little bit of a time sequence so that you can, uh, you know, see a few of the scenes that she was describing in her earlier discussion. Okay, Ma, can you tell, tell us what we're looking at? Here? Okay, so this is a country school, the one-room country school that I went to. And this was uh, when I suppose I was in third grade because I see my sister Helen in the picture and my brother Howard uh, that were in school with me. So I was about a third grader. And as I say, this was the one-room school right across the road from where I lived. And... Uh, then uh, we had a coal burning stove and uh, all of us had duties that we had to do in order to maintain the school. So it was go out get water. Every, so every week we would have a new duty assignment it was called and bring in the wood and all of the, those kinds of things. Um, and you can see my teacher Elsie Gafal, one of my favorite people uh, in the uh, back row there. Next, uh, and that is starting from uh, right to, is that right to left, would you say, David? I'm yeah, that's right to left. Okay, right to left. Okay, so it's Elsie Gafal, my sister Helen, uh, June Wheeler, Grace Wheeler, my brother Howard. That's the back row. Then in the, maybe I won't be able to identify all of these, but there is, um, then starting from the right again is Billy Stein. Don't know the next person. The next person is Grace Wheeler. And uh, moving along the row then um, is me with the bangs kind of hanging over my head there. And uh, right there. Right there. That's uh, Margaret Herbison. And. Uh, um, so that's that's the country school. Who's that strange person with the eyes that are going about 17 directions at once? That girl? Which oh boy, she is really looking strange. <laughs> this one here. That was Millie Wheeler, and she kind of blinked her eyes all the time, and uh, um, looks she, like a little brain damage. What was it? A little <laughs> incest down on the farm or oh, something? Oh, I'll tell you, uh, she continued on like that she blinked her eyes and hardly moved I mean you could you know you'd have to put a, a stake there to see her move she was that slow now this is a school known as the Harrison School at the Harrison School and of course your lofty position within that school was troublemaker troublemaker and you were the leader of what I'm told it was commonly referred to as the Harrison Hoods. Yes, Harrison exactly. School Hoods. Harrison School and who uh, who was involved with the hood group besides well, yourself. I can't find Berna Buck on there, but... Uh, yeah, the I'm accordion a, player. The accordion player that that we sang with up at the uh, graduation. I can't see her there. Well, there's Jimmy Reitz. Jimmy Reitz over there. He was the one right here. It's Jimmy Reitz. Shit his pants. Uh, and they lived about two miles from school. And so he had to sit in that all day long. He not only had to sit in, but we all had to smell it all day long, too. So he couldn't send him home. <laughs> so I think after that, then, uh, the uh, mother uh, kept an extra pair of overhauls for him at school. And this is... <laughs> okay, and this is Moni Weldon. Um, and, uh, was she Carl's sister, Carl Weldon? She was Weldon? Carl Weldon's sister. Now, we've got to find Carl. Where is Carl? Oh, uh, now I see Carl. He's right here in front of the teacher. That's Carl. Carl uh, used to farm right up the road from Grandpa, and I remember this because, of course, I lived with my grandfather when I was a kid. And we go up to Carl's place, and Carl was the youngest man I ever met that didn't have any teeth. I don't know what was wrong with that family. I guess they just didn't take care of their teeth, huh? Carl, I, you see that in the uh, rural areas though, where they don't take care of their, their teeth. But Carl, anyway, suffered from infantile paralysis when he was a very young child. 
and um, yeah, he did. Covered, he did yeah. kind of limp but, around. Yeah, and uh, that was when he lost one year in grade school when he was out with that. Uh, when he was about uh, second or third grade. So the Harrison School hood is really. Uh, maybe like the Mafia, much overrated, and that the numbers were really never that great. No, I kind of. But the devastation obviously <laughs> was there. That must be Berna Buck, uh, right here. That's got to be Berna. And she's our accordion player. That she was accordion player, right? And she was the one that used to try and get my brother up in the hayloft in the, uh, on her farm, and for a little funsy, when my brother would help with haying up Who's there. Who's that? Howard? Howard, uh-huh, right. You know, she was always kind of after any boy that would pay any attention. So that's, that was Berna. Okay, this is a picture then of my sister Helen and myself. See, we wore overalls even then. But uh, ours were kind of a little badly used there. I suppose today the used blue jeans are the, are the real thing, but you can see we had patches then. And, Kirk Boy, you, you kids thing. really do look poor. Well... <laughs> you, know, you were saying that you were almost a welfare family for folks in the neighborhood, and, you know, I would have probably laughed that off and said, oh, yeah, I'm sure, you know. Except this picture, you do look a little tough, Mom. Well, we did have a lot of hand-me-down clothes, but my mother tried to keep them mended and uh, clean and... You know, she was grateful that we had stuff to wear. And as I say, I was always late to school, to country school, trying to figure out which of the rags I was going to wear that day. <laughs> what do you suppose you're doing here? Well, we had been to a picnic, uh, a family picnic. And uh, I think someone just decided that they wanted to take a picture of us two girls together. But you wouldn't wear those kinds of clothes to a picnic oh, unless sure. you were dirt poor. I mean... Super dirt poor. Well, when we went to family picnics, we would dress like that. So that was not that unusual, David. Hmm. How old do you figure you are here? Um, I would say that I was probably 10, and my sister would be 14. My sister Helen would be 14 at that time. So that is about right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Was that the most fun, was these family picnics? A lot of family picnics during the summer months, and yes, they were really fun. We had a lot of cousins our own age, and we got acquainted with them and kept in touch with many of them then down through the years. This is my sister and I clowning my sister Pat and I. Although she was younger than I was, I guess I was kind of standing in a hole there. We were about, I was 16, and Pat was only about 12, but she was tall and slim for her age, uh, and uh, we were at a ball game down at the, um, uh, down at the Plum City, City Park. Oh. This is a picture, uh, a couple of pictures of my brother Howard, who was in the 88th Airborne Division. Uh, he got in bef right before the war was over and then went to Japan with that airborne division. He uh, then, uh, because of his working to repair his own parachute, became interested in industrial sewing machines and when he got out of the service, went to Detroit and went to the Singer uh, sewing machine industrial school there, started work for Ford Motor Company, working in sewing in their industrial department, went on then uh, to school, plus working a full day, went on to school to become an industrial engineer, and he has done very well. He moved from Ford Motor Company then to Chrysler about 12 years ago, and he is alone in his class now uh, for the kind of job that he does for Chrysler. They are hiring some more people on at present, but he is responsible for uh, determining all the fabric that is used in the f from, for the front seat and the paneling of uh, the top 
a line for Chrysler Corporation. He lives in a suburb of Detroit, Clawson, Michigan, uh, has four daughters, is now a grandfather, has recently been through having uh, a kidney transplant, uh, and um, he is enjoying his second life, shall we say, because he would have been dead by this time had he not have had a kidney transplant two years ago. So he is acting like he has been had a rebirth as well. He is loving life and giving a lot of himself to others these days. So uh, I... What was your relationship when you were kids, between you and Howard? Were we you were, buddies or...? Yeah, we were pretty close. Howard and uh, I were probably the closest until he left for the service. And he left right prior to graduation. He never really finished school with the rest of his class. He left in about March for this special ASTRAP training program, it was called, up in Houghton, Michigan. And while he was there then, he met his uh, Audrey Coombe, to whom he is married today. So we had a special relationship, yeah. When he would get the car, he would always let me go along uh, if he didn't have a special date. So we went to dances together, and yes, we had a good time together. And then uh, my sister Helen, uh, who is my elder sister, and Jack, her husband, her first husband, I should say. Now, Helen kind of occupies a special place in the family, as I understand it. She was considered the prettiest of the girls. Uh, guys would try to take her out. She brought you along on a couple of dates or something, too, wasn't it? What's the story there? Well, and uh, people liked her well enough, so they then tried to date me if she refused them or if she would cast them off, then they would come to me next. But they soon found out that I and Helen were not much alike. So uh, we chose different kinds of relationships for sure. Uh, Helen was the first of our family then to go out into the workforce, and she came to uh, St. Paul and went to work uh, for Montgomery Wards. And she was an order filler for a while and roller skated around uh, picking up all the things that were needed for orders. And from there she went into the billing department and when I was ready to uh, go into the workforce, then Helen was still rooming uh, near Montgomery Wards, and so uh, I lived in the same place as Helen did, and uh, then uh, I went on from there. But Helen uh, was married to Jack for uh, about 25 years and was divorced a, a little over... Uh, 12 years ago. When we put this picture on, you indicated that you wanted to talk a little bit about Pat. You were kind of anxious about it. Okay, Sister Pat is my real favorite friend and sister. Not only is she a sister, but she's extremely close to me today, and we share a lot of our uh, future plans together. Uh, and really caring things, whether it's good or bad. I share a lot of those. We do share them back and forth. She's been my bridesmaid twice. And I said, one ended in a divorce, the other one my husband died. If I ever get married again, Pat, you're not going to stand up for me in a yellow dress, um, because it was yellow for both weddings. And I said, if I do have you, it won't be a yellow dress. It seems to not work out too well. Pat, um, and then is currently working for an attorney's office in a small town in Wisconsin. She traveled uh, with her husband after she got married uh, for many years in a trailer home. Her husband was a construction worker, right? Yeah, construction worker. And uh, so they traveled around the country then uh, for about seven years. And then she came back to live in Pepin, his hometown, and still lives there. One of the things I can't understand about why you like her is that I was told that when I was living down on Grandpa's farm, you know, after the divorce went through, mm -hmm. and I would go down and live with Grandpa, that she said that 
she didn't see why Grandpa would take uh, take me in. And I thought I was kind of a contributor. I thought he kind of liked me as a grandson, and I thought that that was kind of mean of her to say that. And I, I would think that you would hold that against her. Pat uh, has uh, a jealousy problem. I think that she has probably felt the most unwanted, probably is the stranger in the whole family, probably is the most sensitive of the whole family, and has never had the good vibes that I did from the aunts and uncles that got to visit, got to do special things with all their kids and that. Pat never had that advantage. So I guess I give, I've given her the benefit of the doubt that she has a deep, very good heart. And so I've overlooked that is brother Art, the baby of the family, uh, and dog Spot. And you remember Spot? I don't remember Spot. Don't you remember him? He was uh, just a uh, Heinz 57 variety dog, but uh, a, a real pal to all of us. And he was shot by one of the neighbors, uh, perhaps then before you were were born, huh? Maybe. You don't remember him. Well, Art here is sitting on the logs for the new barn. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, so... Well, the barn was built before I was born, too. Yeah. Okay. Well, or before I even recall. Yeah, right. It was before you were born. It was built the year... Uh, oh, um, the year after I came to the Twin Cities to work, so it was built in 1947. And my dad built the new barn, had the logs sawn. And uh, Art now lives in Pepin, the same town as my sister does, father of eight boys. Eight boys, boy, I remember. I can tell some stories about Art because we used to work together when... Well, he used to work with Grandpa, and I used to work for Grandpa when we were growing up. And uh, Art was always the racy guy. You know, he always drove his cars real fast and and generally he tried driving him on the right side of the road but if he went across the center line no big deal you know that was just part of driving fast well i think art uh, had a really difficult time his first love died as a senior in high school from she what had, she had cancer and he saw her through that he was going with her before it was detected that she had cancer and so he was several years before he dated shirley uh, he did. He did date other women, but um, I. The other girl was his really his first love, mm -hmm. and as I say, uh, mm -hmm. they gave her graduation early because she died then in her senior year in high school. So I think Art suffered somewhat from that. And Grandpa used to say about Art because Art had eight boys in about eight years. You know, Shirley was always pregnant. She was a perennial pregnant woman. And uh, Grandpa got to the point where he was telling, I think both of us were down at the barn one night, both Art and I, and he says, Art, he says, if I was you, I'd either cut something off or sew something up. I'll never forget that. And uh, the boys are growing up, and they're pretty nice boys, considering there was eight of them, and they were kind of rowdy and had a rowdy dad. Uh, had all the children live that Shirley was pregnant with, they would have 11 boys. 11? Okay, David. Um, well, uh, these are my parents, Gladys and Donald Herbison. Oh, it is. Uh, I thought it was at the farm. But now, when I look at it, it looks like they must have been on a trip someplace. Yeah. Uh, because there are, um, looks like sandstone hill off to the side. And uh, although they did have a bird bath in their own flower garden, uh, that's what made me think that it was theirs. But then I see that it isn't the same flower garden. This is how I remember Grandpa and Grandma's looking. But, uh, you know, Grandpa's pretty much got his his hair is pretty much off of his head at this point. And uh, you can see he's got kind of a white head that's the old farmer tan from a bald-headed farmer guy wearing a cap. 
Uh, I would say that in uh, really in the family, Grandpa was a social animal. Uh, he was the one that would say to my mother, let's do this and let's do that. And I think part of it was just an energy level. He had more energy than what my mother did after she was uh, through caring for the kids and getting their clothes ready and everything. I, I don't think she had time to think beyond each task she was doing. So my father was the one that would get her going to card clubs. There was a group around our neighborhood uh, where about eight couples belonged to it. So on Saturday nights then they'd go and play euchre at each other's houses on Saturday night and take the kids along and there'd be a lunch served afterwards so it was break up about midnight but uh, it was not a drinking kind of group. It was a card playing kind of group and um, so that got us through the winters. Um, those uh, kind of uh, neighborhood get-togethers because there wasn't much else going on. And then in the summertime there was the uh, bas baseball games in the city parks and we went to those quite frequently and my father was especially fond of horse pulls and the Surrey races at the fair. So Fourth of July and the county fair time was the time when and they would have those. So my father always enjoyed going to those. And he was a great picnic person. Unlike a lot of men who hate that picnic fair, my dad loved all the potato salad and all the sociability and that that was involved with get together for a picnic kind of thing. And it was he that would kind of pack my mother in the car on a Sunday and say, let's go and see Grandma Smith or uh, let's go uh, down to Uncle Glenn's or whatever. So he was really the one uh, that was a social animal. I think my mother's life would have been very dull had it not been for the input that my father had uh, into the family uh, social life. And uh, of course... I think you're right about Grandma. She was uh, a hard-working woman. Uh, uh, there was not a whole lot of kidding around with her. No. Uh, you know, Uncle Art, or I put a dead mouse on the table one time and to freak her out and she jumped and she was irritated by it. She got real mad as a matter of fact. I think she even spoke to grandfather about that. Well, but she never forgot it either. That yeah, then she laughed about it afterwards yeah, too. One of the highlights. Mm -hmm. And David was always pulling goofy stunts when he lived with them at the, um, during the summers down there. There was this uh, artificial puke, plastic puke that he put down. <laughs> and he had everybody going with that. Well, uh, mother was really surprised the first time and then when it was pulled on everybody else after she got over her shock of it, then she loved it all. And so David was always coming with these yeah. kind of trick kits or whatever and uh, making life very interesting for them. So they, they really enjoyed Grandpa died at 56 of a heart attack. He had had a heart attack before that that he overcame, but I guess it just the pump just wasn't in that great a shape. Um, and uh, so he spent a summer flat on his back. A grandma had a few medical problems. She uh, had cancer at one point, and they removed that, and then she got diabetes. She looks really in great shape on this picture. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, her whole thing was flowers, and my dad then uh, really appreciated her garden and used to show friends around. He was very proud of that. And when they lived on the farm, uh, she raised a lot of gladiolas. But that was a lot of work because those bulbs had to be dug and tagged and everything. So when she got back, when she lived in Pepin by herself, then iris was her flower. And so she supplied flowers for the nursing homes, for uh, any event that went on for the senior citizens. So they really looked forward to having her flowers. It was always a, a good event for them. And she also was a reporter. She would call up on the telephone everybody in the neighborhood and find out if there was any news and then report it to the local newspaper, one of those old gossip columns. And if you're familiar with small town newspapers, you understand what that is. I think we've got one more picture of Grandpa here I'm going to put on. Here's a, another picture of Grandpa. I guess we mentioned that he was kind of a jokester. This is taken on the porch of uh, the old home place. You know, Ma said it was a tar paper shack when they first built it. It was a tar paper shack when the damn thing was torn down 50 years later, too. That uh, brick-like stuff there on the sides is just 
a, a fancy kind of asphalt tar paper. Uh, and of course there was no John in there. This is the porch area. You, right when you come in from the fields, you'd wash up right behind where Grandpa's sitting there. There was always a wash basin. And they would collect water for washing hair in this tub that you see in the front. Now, I don't know if you can see what Grandpa's doing there, but he has got a fishing pole and he's fishing in the, uh, in of course the tank where they, or the pail where they catch the rainwater for hair wash. And so this is kind of a, a fun type picture. He also used to take a leak off the front porch, or I used to take a leak off the front porch. He was classy enough. He walked about 20 feet and went in the rose bushes on the side of the house. But if you got a whiff of that barnyard, you know, so what if you did take a leak in those rose bushes? Could never smell it. What do you got to say about this picture, Mom? Well, uh, this is, of course, in the summertime, but uh, in the wintertime, uh, that whole back area behind him was always covered with firewood. Uh, we burned uh, wood for many years along with coal, and uh, so the house was heated then by a center stove. And uh, later years then we had oil, but at this time uh, it was um, a stack and cut the wood, and I especially like to uh, chop wood and uh, so after or split the wood use the axe to split the wood that was kind of my favorite thing to do so uh, yeah pa was full of fun and so he could go along with a good joke and so he loved posing for this picture i think this is a happy couple at like their 30th wedding anniversary, Dave. I'm sure that this was taken on a wedding anniversary. They were uh, married on the 12th of June, and uh, so this was taken in the yard then, uh, out from the house. Okay, what about this shot, Ma? I say every farmer has to have his um, friend uh, a dog, and this was Spot again. And you can see the fields in the background, and this was Pa's typical where he had his uh, build cap on and his uh, uh, denim jacket, and the windmill is in the back. We uh, pumped our water for many, many years w with the windmill. And when my dad made extra money, he worked with a man who repaired these windmills, repaired not only the pump part, but the mechanism in the top of the head and my father was scared to death to climb but because he needed the extra money he would go up that 40 50 feet in the middle of the winter and repair those uh, necessary mechanical parts in the head of the windmill what i'm going to do here in the next few shots is ma was saying that she liked to be a little bit flashy and we've got some nice photos of her uh, and a cute little self, and so I'm just going to be showing some quick clips here. All right, but this one I want to tell you now, as you look in the background, uh, was uh, down to the right was where the school was. It was across the road in the Harrison School where I went. For Actually, you can see the... it's that little building right in that the corner building. of the picture. Okay, and uh, then we had the old oak tree. Uh, David, can you point to the old oak tree where we had a swing there? Yeah. Uh, and so, David, that tree still that? stands in the yard. You're right. And it's been there for at least 75 years. And uh, so this was uh, towards the highway. The highway was down along that way. Okay. You can really see what a steady job and money does for mom's wardrobe. It really picks up. Late 40s. You know this. You know this is the final one in our clothing display by Maggie Bergen, uh, or M Margaret Herbison, Herbison, I should say. <laughs> but you know this is a very provocative kind of pose. This is my favorite picture out of this whole group, and I don't know. There's something in your face there that really intrigues me. Like you're thinking about something instead of just being cute. Mm -hmm. What do you suppose it would be? 
Well, I don't know. It was close to the end of my vacation that year, and uh, uh, I suppose uh, I was thinking of getting back to the big city. You'd had enough of the farm? I'd had enough, uh, and it had been just absolutely great. Having a paid vacation was wonderful. Well, you've heard about it in the interview. It's been referred to many times. This is the outhouse. Two-seater John. Obviously, Mom, you've, you're, you're finishing up. You're not going to, or you would have a different expression on your face. <laughs> Could very well be. All right, this is my next year's vacation. I was up at Gull Lake, uh, and uh, we were on the top of a boat, out sunning ourselves, going around the lake, I and a couple of girlfriends. And you'll note the headgear. That was very popular back in the 40s, 44 on. Rosie the Riveter always wore dish towels on her head, so we continued to carry that on even after the war was over. It was a great way to hide those ugly rollers. See, there's a camera on deck. Were you, did you meet some rich guy or something, or how'd you get on this boat? No, we paid for it. <laughs> it was part of the cruise around the lake, and it was inexpensive. But um, uh, Bar Harbor at that time was a great resort area. They had the big bands, uh, Duke Ellington, all those bands um, played at, uh, at Bar Harbor. And uh, so it was a fun time to go up there in the summertime. That's a pretty good shot of you. Yeah, that's the same vacation and uh, at Bar Harbor that same summer. Did you meet any guys when you were up at this place? Yes, I got a free ride back from a young man who was up there. Uh, he had just gotten out of the service, had a new car, a new Chevrolet car, and instead of taking the bus back, then he offered us two ladies a ride back to the city. So we gladly saved the bus there, had enjoyable conversation. He was going to the university on his GI Bill then to become a doctor, and uh, a very nice person. So we did get a free ride back to town. This is the fall following my a uh, vacation in Bar Harbor. I met your father uh, at the airport when I returned. He was working down there as a lineman uh, at the airport while he was going to school at the Pontiac Aviation. And uh, we uh, were at Joyce's wedding, his sister Joyce's wedding, when this picture was taken. So we were dating at that time then. That was mm -hmm. the fall of 19... 48.